Is everybody okay with that background or uh, happy? Okay. Sabharyaya Sapraja Kaman Bhubuje Nyavirodhata Sangiya Mana Satkirti Shastri Bhi Suragayakai Pratyusheshvanu Baddhena Hridashun Vaan Hare Katha Sabharyaya Sapraja Kaman Bhubu Jenya Virodhata Sangiya Mana Satkirti Shastra Bhi Sura Gayakai Pratyusheshvanu Baddhena Hridashun Vaan Hare Katha Sabharyaya Sapraja Kaman Bhubu Jenya Virodhata Sangiya Mana Satkirti Sastra Bhi Sura Gayake Pratyusheshvanu Baddhena Hridashun Vaan Hare Katha Gentlemen, Sastri Bhishra Gaya Kai Pratisheshvanu Bhatti Sashri Bhishra Gayake Pratisheshvan Baddena Hridashun Man Hare Katha Sabharya Saprajakam Bhubu Jenya Virodhata Giyamana Satkirti Shastri Bhi Sura Gayakai Pratyusheshvanu Baddhena Hridashun Vaan Hare Katha Ladies, anybody? Sabharyaya Supraja Kama Bhuvu Jenya Virodhata Sangiya Mana Satkirti Sashri Bhi Sura Gayake Okay Om Ajnanti Mnandasya, Gnana Anjana Shalakaya, Chakshur Mnitamena, Tasmaya Shri Gurave Namo. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadhara, Shiva Sadi, Gaur Bhakta Vinda, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. I feel like I'm sitting in a, you know, the Jedi Warriors conglomeration. Anybody watch Star Wars? Like the Jedi warriors, they are the saviors of the universe. So the occasion, you remember that when Ben Ben Kobe won, Ben Kenobi, sorry, Ben Kenobi. So they are all sitting together like Jedi warriors, and their purpose is to find the next generation and to spread this dharma around the universe. And they take it up in their hands to do that. 
So we are all assembled it's a little, it's a little bit like those Jedi warriors to save this planet. Yeah? <laughs> maybe 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 this universe who knows. So um this is an extraordinary story so I am Bhuv Manu who lived uh, from our calculations millions and millions of years. One Manu is supposed to have ruled like 71 or more than 71 you guys. So it's an extraordinary story for from our point of view. Um and he is just visiting Kardama Muni and Kardama Muni is someone who's just performed some thousands and thousands of celestial years of tapasya austerity. Now this is obviously an extraordinary story and um I always I'm, I'm when I'm on the streets on the roads um which is most of my waking life looks like and what happens is some people kind of question like this is too extraordinary these stories and what i say to them is um we shouldn't have problem with extraordinary stories it's just out of if it's just out of ordinary we shouldn't have problem with an extraordinary story what we should have problem with irrational and illogical stories as vaishnavas as people pursuing a theological pursuit a movement a spiritual movement we shouldn't really have a problem with extraordinary stories because extraordinary stories is always welcome the problem we should have is irrational and illogical stories and i'll give you an example if i say prabhu ji could you please go and find me a round square or could you please go and find me a square circle that's irrational if you know the meaning of square and if you know what meaning of round and if i say round square or a square circle that's irrational so you should you may think okay radhika prasad last night too much varuni i don't know too much so much juice or something but we shouldn't have problem with extraordinary stories extraordinary stories are just simply out of our current comprehension that's all it is so we don't need to have any fear or ex, um uh, phobia for extraordinary stories but what we should have is a problem with irrational and illogical stories but none of bhagavatam stories are irrational or illogical they're extraordinary which is very good so even if someone says oh these are mythological stories or something like that actually i i beg to differ i said to someone because it is mythological to think that this is the only planet and your ontology your nature you the living you are that's the only thing that i can comprehend and nothing else i can't comprehend cannot exist that's more mythological than calling these mythological so these are very extraordinary stories that we can learn from so we shouldn't shy away from extraordinary stories like swayambhu manu lives for 71 yugas or kardamuni did like 10000 years of celestial austerities and he built a celestial plane or it's not illogical it's just out of my control at the moment it's something that i cannot do that doesn't mean that there are higher beings or higher planets people can do that so that's kind of a starting point i want to establish because it's always lingering in people's mind when i'm talking out i was doing a bhagavatam class to a rash masco temple the other some time ago and there was about i don't know 40 brahmacharis there i said just looked and it's just orange room and somebody brought the some kind of point was brought this some a similar point was brought so i say yeah yeah we shouldn't have any problem with that we actually should welcome so that point needs to be established now we can once we've established that point we can grow over that so we are at a cusp in this uh, part of bhagavatam we are at a verge of a uh, incarnation being um, introduced to us we're going to incar- when we read about an incarnation on in bhagavatam it's not we are just reading we are actually encountering ourselves it's a fact it's not just we are reading some you know stories of the yore from some it's not like that when we encounter kapilamuni in car we are going to you are actually encountering kapilamuni it's a fact 
So Kapil Muni introduced, uh, is going to introduce the philosophy, which is very, very class philosophy, and it's called Sankhya. And Sankhya philosophy resolves a lot of problems that just as human beings we face every day. The educational systems, the scientific systems, um, the, the right wings and the left wings, as they call it in the universities these days. You, you, guys, you guys know all these things if you've been to universities. So, Sankhya philosophy resolves a lot of problems. One of the, I'll, I can do, I can, we'll move this into a maybe separate topic for some other day or maybe some separate series of lectures. I can do nearly maybe more than 35 episodes, like classes, to show how Sankhya philosophy can dissolve all of our modern existing academic institutional educational institutions problems. I'll just say one of it. Mind over matter, for example, this is a big debate in the neurological circles, in the scientific circles, in the universities. Because mind is a completely different ontology and physical world looks like a different ontology. But mind, you can't say, give me a bag of blue, two kilos of blue color mind. You can't do that. Or give me a bag of, I don't know, four black justices. You can't do that. So there are so many things that's metaphysical and that cannot be on a mental and intellectual platform. They're on a different ontology. And this question has been plaguing to philosophers, to university professors, to educational systems, Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard. And the problem is, how does mind react like, and interact with matter when they're both a completely different ontology? Where is the platform they actually interact? And when we're actually seeing, they always interact. How does this happen? Where is this happening? This is just one problem. Sankhya philosophy can very perfectly address. And you'll be surprised there's exactly a parallel philosophy to Sankhya in the current, in the current world which has been completely hidden in plain sight. Did you know that? There's actually Sankhya philosophy in the current universities, in the current educational system. There is. And it has been for a few centuries. It's a combination of what's called hylomorphism and um, Thomism. Anybody know Thomas Aquinas? You will know Thomas Aquinas. Tom Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas, the Catholic who um, baptized Aristotle, so to speak. So there's a combination called hylomorphism and... Um, can everybody hear me clearly? Is it? Okay. So there is a, I think it's called, okay. Just let me know if you can't hear me or if, if I'm running a thousand miles an hour. Radhika Prasad, slow down. So there is a combination of philosophy. It's called hylomorphism. And uh, there's another philosophy called Thomism. They go parallel next to each other. If you read those two philosophies, exactly Sankhya. Exactly. You cannot deny that it has to have cropped from Sankhya. It, they, you cannot deny that there has been a very profound dialogue between the West and the East. It's impossible. So what hylomorphism does is it gives matter this dignity of protophysical dignity. It's called protophysical, protophysical and in Sanskrit it's called chinmatra. So it gives matter this protophysical dignity where there is a cloud over every matter to interact with mind. And similarly, in the mind, from Thomism point of view, there is this primordial protophysical dignity called Chinmatra, and that's where the matter and the mind are always interacting and influencing each other. That's what we are doing in this world as Tatastha Shakti. We are not supposed to be here, but we are here. And we are still interacting here, and that interaction is happening on what's called a Chinmatra protophysical state. 
so if you understand sankhya sankhya can eliminate a lot of problems that our educational systems have been facing so that that's why if you have in the first kind of bhagavatam there's a lot of logic and rhetorics going on in the second kind of bhagavatam you'll see lots of what's called theologically called genesis and in the third kind of bhagavatam when you come in you're talking about the sankhya philosophy where spiritual worlds like people that are coming from the spiritual world the conscious entities they are actually interacting somehow and if we don't get this interaction and if we don't free ourselves from um inaccurate interactions incompatible interactions we're going to be here for a long ride we're going to have to really get this point if we don't understand how we are getting bound here if we don't understand how the mind is completely engrossed and entangled here by this process we're going to he- we are here in real rabbit hole ride in a big ride down the spiral spiraling down the rabbit hole so we really have to get these points how so sankhya really helps that so sankhya is re- which is the reason sankhya has been discussed in the very initial parts of bhagavatam so then everything builds over it so if you if you regress you understand regress everybody understand regress regressing is like going backwards progress and regressing yourself back if you regress linguistically if you regress philosophically this is exactly how a scientific book would have looked like 5000 years ago i'm serious i'm not i'm not talking just like i'm because i'm some hari krishna fanatic or something <laughs> serious stuff if you regress linguistically from this book if you regress philosophically regress back how anthropologically how things have changed how things have morphed there are people who've done that like carl jung or people like that this is exactly how a scientific book would look like look like in a university 5000 years ago serious stuff so this is a which is the reason propat keeps saying scientific 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 and some people question me well, how is that scientific unless someone is spinning a butterfly in a laboratory and has a microscope no no that's that's not what science is limited to so that's exactly how a scientific book would look like so we are really pursuing a science here sankhya so the background of this i obviously would like to give a context before just jumping into the purport and uh, translation so that's the context we are in now that's the broad kind of range that we are seeing the first time you read bhagavatam it could be a little tricky because we are very anxious to finish the scripture or we are very anxious that or oh, will i understand this or what is this language or sanskrit but you do it that, like the first and the second and the third and the fourth and you keep doing it you enter into this ontology new ontology you enter into this new existence and once you enter into this existence then that's where pandita samadarshana that's where samam sarveshu bhuteshu that's where the equality comes that's where everyone can see everybody as a conscious entity not like you know indian english you know i don't know middle eastern iraq chinese i don't know nepalese we don't see that like that anymore you see as a conscious entity so we need to we need to allow ourselves to enter into this ontology of bhagavatam once you do that then the benefit is that we see everybody as a conscious entity atma and then the journey just begins journey just begins then you see everybody as an atma as a conscious entity you see yourself as a conscious entity in light of the supreme conscious entity and when this happens then that's just the beginning of a human life so that's the context was it clear so far was this, did the sound get better 
or did i completely lose you radhika prasad we'll uh, we'll get questions at the end but i just wanted to make sure so far was okay or not okay we'll go to questions at the end yes can you hear me well or my sound okay yes sorry okay i need to be careful when meera is around uh, everybody knows ontology ontology is the ontology is the science of nature of existence causes effects what is the final cause what is the material cause what is the efficient cause what kind of nature are we dealing with so ontology in pure simple sense is a nature of existence that's ontology so we enter into this new ontology not the one that we are used to and then we get, we kind of <clears throat> that's kind of just the beginning and then it just psh, by the time you get to prahlad stories by the time you get to nara narayana and then obviously before the 10th canto then things kind of start making sink yep so now i'll read the translation because i don't want you to go and say nice class but he never spoke about the verse um so and uh, we don't do refunds by the way no refunds in hari krishnas so <laughs> so you should come you should know that before coming to hari krishna lecture we don't do refunds here so um emperor swayambhuva manu enjoyed life with his wife and subjects and fulfilled his desire or do you want to do am i do word to word quickly or is it let's keep going keep going you happy with it i'm i'm i do a little differently emperor swayambhuva enjoyed life with his wife and subjects and fulfilled his desires without being disturbed by unwanted principles contrary to the process of religion celestial musicians and their wives sang in chorus about the pure reputation of the emperor and early in the morning every day he used to listen to the past times of the supreme personality of god with a loving heart human society okay that's the translation so we're going to start the purport now human society is actually meant for realization of perfection in krishna consciousness so usually you'll notice when there is an instructive verse when when propa is using an instructive like writing an instructive purport usually his first statement will be a blockbuster so human society is actually meant for realization of perfection in krishna consciousness by the way ian prabhu i actually don't mind what was that you wanted to raise because if that is something that will hinder your listening yeah, thanks okay because i just uh, felt there's no point me just proceeding 1000 miles an hour if you that's a good question sankhya philosophy is everything sankhya philosophy is obviously understanding one we are a conscious entity that's obviously that's the basis atma and sankhya philosophy more some in sankhya is actually it's there's actually a cognate word in english some some san in some is like some total in english and kya is like a broadly spoken and a summarized summarized philosophy sankhya is a total broadly summarized philosophy and what it has to what it usually deals with de- deals with its causes and effects if you want to put it in one broad category it's talking about causes and effects and particularly when we are a conscious entity it's more pressing to understand our interactions as a conscious entity in this planet in the material world does it okay yeah i just wanted to didn't want to leave you on the deep end there so human society is actually meant for realization of perfection in krishna consciousness there is no restriction against living with a wife and a children and children but life should be so conducted that one may not go against the principles of religion economic development regulated sense and enjoyment and ultimately liberation from material ex- ex- existence the vedic principles are designed in such a way that the conditioned souls who have come to this material existence may be guided in fulfilling their material desires and at the same time be liberated and go back to godhead back home i'll just stop there for a while <clears throat> just a bit of clarification 
this verse is obviously talking about what's called um, pravritti marga has everybody heard about pravritti marga before everybody heard of this before so there's two kind of broad categories broad ways that are explained in shrimad bhagavatam one is pravritti and one is nivritti so if you want to say pravritti in english it would be something like pro vert like pra becomes pro in english and vritti becomes vert like introvert extrovert subvert things like that so pravritti oh really can you hear is a who can not hear word v a t like introvert extrovert you know you use the word introvert extrovert subvert the v e r t in that words come from sanskrit vritti so pra becomes pro like superman supra pra becomes pro in english probiotics probiotics pro engineering he is a pro when you use pro this comes from sanskrit so i was just kind of little deviation linguistic deviation <laughs> so just hang in there we will we'll, we'll get there so this part of the purport is obviously talking something about pravritti and nivritti so have you heard these words before you have so pravritti is somewhere you're actually engaging in this world you're doing all the normal duties you you do like all other people do a job you get married you raise children um yeah pay bills um stay out of jail things like that so pravritti is you're actually using what's in this world the the vyavaharika the social conventions of this world and you're using that for krishna consciousness that's pravritti and there's another another way that is described in shrimad bhagavatam and it's called nivritti nivritti is where you're actually isolate yourself and you go away from the civilization and you're kind of cutting yourself out and you're completely devoting your life for a very secluded spiritual perfection advancement spiritual advancement and spiritual perfection so that's nivritti so this pravritti and nivritti so this stanza that we just um, this little paragraph we spoke about is talking about pravritti where you're engaged you may be doing a job i i i did a job i was a banker for maybe 20 years so you are in a job you raise children i'm raising children you're married it's just like paying bills don't step over the red lights all that kind of things and um, but what the way you do it is you do it in a way it's sponsoring yourself a krishna conscious life you get paid and you get rewarded for your pravritti life but what you're doing is you're using that benefits to sponsor yourself a krishna conscious life it's a very technical word sponsoring yourself a krishna conscious life that's pravritti marga there's another marga called nivritti marga where you're secluded and you go away completely isolate sit in a secluded place and giving yourself to a fully dedicated krishna conscious advancement so here this this topic is talking about a pravritti marga but on a a, a a a devotee regardless of being in a pravritti or nivritti marga it doesn't matter he is using either of his stages either of his platforms to become krishna conscious so in that sense for an advanced devotee there's actually no difference between pravritti or nivritti so he could be a sanyasi but he's always conducting programs he's always talking to people sometimes he may be even talking to mataji's but it looks like he's in a nivritti marga but he's always engaging and that way he's utilizing all his resources to advance krishna consciousness someone would be in a pravritti marga like in a family life but he's always thinking of how to i don't know distribute books or temple programs or engage his family in sharing this knowledge to this with this world so for an advanced devotee who's in a, in kind of going raising above for him this kind of pravritti nivritti don't make any sense anymore it kind of becomes whatever i can use 
so it's it's not which it's not like this is greater than that or that is greater than that the point is which is good for you what is good for your advancement and you choose something that is it's nice music so you <laughs> so we use we use doesn't matter if we are in a grahastha doesn't matter we are in a pravritti doesn't matter we are in nivritti doesn't matter the point is as long as you're using what you have to sponsor yourself a krishna conscious life to sponsor this world a krishna conscious life then it doesn't matter where you are that's the point that's the whole point of international society of krishna consciousness it's to give yourself and sponsor yourself and sponsor this world a completely krishna conscious life we just don't pass a book anybody can pass a book anybody can pass a book but what we are passing is a lifestyle a lifestyle of enlightenment a lifestyle of fully conscious life a lifestyle where we are where we are going from one realization to next realization every minute we are dying for new realizations we are escalating our consciousness we are elevating our consciousness and it becomes like an ocean so that's what propat says human society is actually meant for realization of perfection in krishna consciousness yeah so these people are not by the way indians or hindus these is swayambhu manu or satarupa or kardamuni these not these people are not like indians in the sense that we see now no maybe if you go and meet the manu that's current manu and you say i'm an indian and he will say okay explain and you may have to say oh um india in the bhartavarsha in the earth planet um east asia um himalayas oh you talk, oh that's now called india is it so these were not indian people neither are these uh, saints indians they are universal people they are universal and what they teaching us is a universal dharma a universal consciousness it's got nothing to do with a geographical india it's got nothing to do with it of course krishna has come to india and there's um, that's a completely different topic different class why krishna may have chosen that this is so many acharyas that have even prabhupada has given so many explanations but the point is this is not like a in indian religion this is a universal religion this is a universal movement i don't like to call it a religion it's a universal movement so it doesn't matter you are a sanyasa brahmachari grihastha vanaprastha brahmana kshatriya shuddha that's not important what's important is what suits you for your advancement in your krishna consciousness that's what the point is that's what we got to get then we can connect with this world then the world connect with us then there will be a mix there will be a common platform where devotees and this world can actually start a dialogue because we need to find common grounds to make a dialogue so we have to find some or doesn't matter what ashram we are or what varna we are choose something that is good for you to make spiritual advancement and find a common ground where we can actually interact with this world and they can actually understand us they can actually relate to us we don't need to make them feel like a i we don't understand what they're talking about or we don't need to feel like you know we have these little words like the k bomb karmis or f bombs like the fruity workers or things like that we don't need to put people into that categories like that we have to find a common ground where we can actually make a dialogue with this world we have to do that that's what every vaishnav has done that's what these people have done swayambhuv manu kardam muni narada muni that's what they've done D- regardless which planet they go regardless which 
universe they go, what they're doing is they're finding common grounds for dialogue with the next eternal world. And if we can maintain that dialogue, if we can perpetuate this dialogue, then there is a hope, there is a chance that we will at some stage make this a world movement. It's a movement is a word where it's a perpetual thing. So we have to find a way. It's not about pravruti, it's not about nivruti, it's not about ashrams, it's not about deep philosophies. That's not the point. It's, it's, it's a collective movement. Did I scare the crap out of you? Or are you still with me? Happy? Okay, it is understood that Emperor Swayambhuv Manu enjoyed his household life by following these principles. It is stated here that early in the morning, there was a musician who used to sing with musical instruments about the glories of Lord. And the emperor with his family personally used to hear about the pastimes of the supreme person. These customs are still prevalent in India in some of the royal families and temples. Professional musicians sing with shahnais and the sleeping members of the house gradually get up from their beds in a pleasing atmosphere. During bedtime also the singers sing songs in relation with the pastimes of the Lord with shahnai, it's a musical instrument, um, accompaniments and the householders gradually fall asleep remembering the glories of the Lord. In every house, in addition to the singing program, there is an arrangement of Bhagavatam lectures in the evening. Family members sit down hold Hare Krishna Kirtana, hear narrations from Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and enjoy music before going to bed. The atmosphere created by this Sankirtana movement lives in their hearts and while sleeping they also dream of the singing and glorification of the Lord. That's classic, isn't it? <laughs> that's classic. You go to listening to the bed and then that's what you dream. And then when you wake up you're so fresh. That's, that's a classic life. <laughs> Um, and while sleeping, by also in dreams of, uh, of, and also dream of singing the glorification of the Lord in such a way, the perfection of Krishna consciousness can be attained. This practice is very old, as learned from these words of Srimad Bhagavatam millions of years ago. Swayambhu Manu used to avail himself of this opportunity to live householder life in the peace and prosperity of Krishna conscious atmosphere. Just before going further, I just wanted to. Um, make some points on the word Nashrama because I just feel I left it a little incomplete there. So, uh, apart from all the pravriti and nivriti and all the, just hang in there. We'll, I know my classes are a little uh, philosophical. Just hang in there. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll kind of bring them all together at the end. Yeah? Just stay with me. So apart from all the Sankhya and Pravriti and Nivriti and all that um, discussion, there's something very important we need to understand. These things are actually not possible unless we understand, clearly understand what's called a Varnashrama Dharma. Some new people here may not understand this, but we, we, we will explain. Varnashrama Dharma is a class, is classifying an individual into their society, in a society by the nature of their um, by the nature of the work and the, by nature of the, the, the psychological nature they carry, they kind of classify themselves into a part of the society and give themselves a career which is suiting their nature. Like for example, if you're a Brahmana, you're a teacher. That's your nature, you become a Brahmana, for example. And if your nature is a chivalrous, like, you know, protector and a... He's a Kshatriya, it's called a warrior or a policeman or something like that, security guards or people like that, navy or something like that. And Shudras, like if you have a nature of commercial, commerce, merchants, flourishing economies, building councils, so this is, if that's your nature, then you sponsor yourself a life that leads towards that, a merchant. And the final is called a Shudra, which is a simple tradie or a simple worker who just does his job don't want to use my brain too much, just get the job done, I'm happy to help you out. So these are the kind of just examples of natures people, there's actually a book called Personality Plus by Florence Littuar. She talks about this in the modern language. So you, you 
look at yourself, you choose what your nature is, you also employ others based on their natures. And this is called a Varnashrama Dharma, Varnashrama system. And this Pravriti or Nivriti Margas, this is extremely hard to follow unless we understand the Varnashrama Dharma. And now the question is, how do you explain these kind of systems, these kind of, to a modern society out there and still bring, us the, bring them into a Krishna conscious journey? How are we going to do that? This has been an eternal debate in, this has been an eternal debate in, um, in Vaishnava Sampradaya. How are we going to do that? So usually what religions tend to do is when, when they find a modern society, what they do is, Prabhupada used to say, like modern society is full of zeros and all you have to put number one into, in front of the zeros, which is Krishna and it brings a whole lot of value. So in the name of that, sometimes what happens is what religions do is because they kind of come to this aversion towards the modern society and they try to bulldoze everything what a modern society has got and they try to bring in a completely new ethnicity or new culture. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Because Varnashrama is eternal system, it's already there out there. There's police, so they're kshatriyas, they're teachers. So they can be classified as brahmanas. They are commercial people. Cryptos, Wall Street. You can classify them as merchants or commercial or vaishyas. And there are people like tradies, just happy to fix the job. 200 bucks, I'm out of here. It's already there. We don't need to bulldoze the whole social structures and bring in like a new, complete, complete new system that people don't can't relate. So all we need to add is just in their respective positions, all we need to act is give them Krishna consciousness. That's all we need to do. Just give them Krishna consciousness. Just as simple as that. And if we can do that, then eventually people will understand, once they read Prabhupada's purpose, they, they understand how they have to use their nature in Krishna consciousness how they can sponsor themselves a Krishna conscious life, how they can sponsor this world a Krishna conscious life. That just automatically follows. We don't need to bulldoze all the structures of the society, modern society, and bring in this new kind of um, geographical or ethnical society. We don't need to do that. Just, uh, what is that? Gnane prayasa mudapasya namanta eva jivanti san mukaritam bhavadi yavartam sthane stita shruti gata tanuvan manobhi. Let them stay in their own respective. Yo praya so jitab jitai saptostrai lokyam. So there's a word, there's a very nice verse, it's repeated in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sthane stita shruti gata tanuvan manobhi. Let them stay in their respective positions. What we give is. Tanuvan Manchobi, BMW, by body, minds and words. All we give is Krishna consciousness. We just add Krishna consciousness to their lives. We don't need to bulldoze all the structures that they have. We don't need to do that. So that is Varnashrama system. Varnashrama system is not some, you know, this um, inconspicuous kind of system where people have to completely altered their lives to the point of embarrassing, like showing, feeling embarrassed in their family circles or social circles. It doesn't have to be like that. Sthane stita tan shrutikata manobhi. Let them stray wherever they are. Let them just hear about Krishna. Just give them an opportunity to hear about Krishna. We are like those Jedi warriors. We have this torch in our hands will pass it to every single person, everybody that we meet. We make sure that this will safely be passed to the next generation. We have to do that. Who do you want to be? A devotee. I remember when I came to Australia, they used to say, they used to look at me and they say, who do you want to be? And they used to say, there was a rugby union international cup going on. They used to say, who do you want to be? A wallaby. And I used to say, who do you want to be? A devotee. So, we have to be these um, devotees, these torch carriers, these keepers. 
we have received this incredible wisdom this sankhya it's a combination which can show mind over matter how the mind can interact over matter how the conscious living entity which can never be touched by any material entanglement how on god's planet is this interacting so how the hell did we come to this position how 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 did the atma end in this position and if we are a conscious entity we are a conscious entity nothing's going to happen to our atma the body will go but nothing's going to happen to the atma the atma will get up the body dismisses the body is destroyed the atma gets up walks to the next service there's no damage done to the atma so once we understand this once now that we've got this sankhya now that we got this atman realization now that we got this incredible wisdom in our hands now we have like along with power comes great responsibility now we have this owners this responsibility to pass it to this world in a way they can connect and relate to us we have to we have to find a way collectively we got to come together we have to do this for prabhupad sake for narada muni sake for kapila muni sake for the sake of chaitanya mahaprabhu for the sake of panchatatva we have to do it so far so good so that's what i just wanted to touch with the pravriti and varnashrama because swayambhu man is obviously leading a very varnashrama lifestyle and it's very important for us to understand varnashrama or pravriti marga or a grihastha or a family life or whatever it is it's not a license for sense gratification it doesn't give us a license to the other my wife was asking the other day she says okay if it's a pravriti marga where, where do you see the line you see the and the, the i hope she was satisfied with the answer and uh, i said to her that the point is where the, it you have to see the line you know when you go to a gym you don't go to a gym and you just pick up like a 70 pound weight lift no it doesn't work like that or you don't go to a gym and pick up a 2 pound and just do ting 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 you know you have to make sure it's just pushing you enough and it's just not destroying you but at the same time it's not leaving you complacent it's like being in a gym you don't break your back but that doesn't mean you're just taking a two like a two pound dumbbell and going yeah i've done 150 dumbbells today no it doesn't so you need to know exactly where the line is we need to know where we have to push we need to know where we have to withdraw ourselves and maintaining that balance not to by by that as soon as you notice our spiritual advancement is being sacrificed with our too much engrossment then that's where you check yourself oh 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 i think that was not necessary i think i got a little carried away there so we understand that regardless we are in grihastha or brahmachari or sanyasi or vanaprastha wherever we are we need to see this put this checkpoints to ourselves and the point that that's the point that's the way we do we make spiritual progress by seeing the balance by making sure every people can relate to us by making sure we are not destroying the whole social structures but just adding to krishna adding krishna into their lives by making sure people are not people can relate to us by making sure we find common grounds to 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 establish a dialogue and then we are the teachers then we are the keepers then we are the jedi warriors anakin skywalker luke skywalker ben kenobi you know they were there to save the universe didn't they luke skywalker he was prepared to give his life away to save the universe so that's when we become that wanted vaishnava jedi warriors where we are happy to find a common dialogue where we happy to do this so we have we have it looks i don't want to scare scare you guys but the point is you can take it, everybody has their own pace i understand that 
it's not a session of uh, scaring people out and saying like you become the jedi warriors now that's not the point the point is everybody has their own pace we have to be realistic we have to be practical but at the same time we have to understand that this planet really needs us to help this planet really wants us out there help help them they don't need to feel like we've shut our doors on them so we we are here to save this planet we are here to give this planet a krishna conscious life we are not here just to flick a book or we are not here to fl- flick a festival pamphlet that's okay that's got its advantages its benefits but the point is we are here to pass a whole bhagavat life we are here to pass a whole torch of this bhagavat wisdom that's what we are here for that's why we've got this wisdom see remember we we, were, we haven't been so see you wouldn't be here if krishna hadn't chosen you and that's not very that's not something so simple if krishna has chosen us like out of 7 billion people out there 7 and 1/2 now it's growing every minute look like 7 and 1/2 billion people if krishna has chosen us here there is a great merit in it isn't it isn't it a fact there is no need for depressing ourselves krishna has chosen us there is a reason why he's chosen us and it's got a great merit in that and once that not now that we have chosen krishna uh, sorry krishna has chosen and of course vice versa we have chosen krishna let's let's perpetuate this relationship let's make sure this relationship is established with every single living entity every single conscious entity that we come across speak krishna think krishna eat krishna dance krishna sleep krishna bath krishna sit krishna wake up krishna stand krishna walk krishna give krishna it's beautiful it's fantastic every day is new every day you want to wake up you can't wait to wake up because you you keen for these realizations you want to get more you want to get more you want to get more and it doesn't stop and that's exactly what happens in spiritual world if you do if we do that we are actually in the spiritual world when we are here ananda ambudi vardhanam increasing every day so what's the what's the difference between a spiritual world and a material world there's not actually much because there are atmas here there's atma here we are all atmas interacting and talking about krish what's the difference the only difference material world and spiritual world is material world is lodged on our mind for sense gratification when that can be removed there's no difference between spiritual and material we don't have any problem we don't have any problem with lots of money we don't have any problem with no money <laughs> the point is whichever position we have we are happy to use it for krishna consciousness that's the point yeah i'll just read the last leg and um, then obviously we'll take some questions pass the donation box and when the donation box is full we'll give all the answers <laughs> so just joking as far as temples are concerned in each and every royal palace or rich man's house inevitably there's a nice temple and the members of the household rise early in the morning and go to the temple to see the mangalartik ceremony the mangalartik ceremony is the first worship of the morning in the artik ceremony a light is offered in circles before the deity as are a conch shell and flowers and a fan the refreshments and give audience to the devotees the devotees then go back to the house or sing the glories of the lord in the temple the early morning ceremonies still take place in the indian temples and palaces temples are meant for the assembly of general public temples within palaces are especially for the royal families but in many of these palace temples the public is also allowed to visit the temple of the king in of jaipur is situated within the palace i was there by the way but the public is allowed to assemble if one goes there he will see the temple is always crowded with at least 500 devotees i was there by the grace of kadam karan maharaj he took us to jaipur and it was an absolutely fantastic experience 
After the Mangal Aarti ceremony, they sit down together and sing the glories of the Lord with musical instruments and thus enjoy life. Temple worship by the royal family is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, where it is stated that those who fail to achieve success in Bhakti Yoga principles within one life within one life are given a chance to take birth in the next life. In a family of rich men or in royal family or family of learned brahmanas or devotees, if one gets the opportunity to take birth in these families, he can achieve the facilities of a Krishna conscious atmosphere without difficulty. A child born in the Krishna conscious atmosphere is sure to develop Krishna consciousness. The perfection which he failed to attain in his last life is again offered in this life and he can make himself perfect without fail. Okay, so that's the last leg. So obviously that's a sign that I won't be delaying your breakfast. Um, this is um, just for people that don't come from, that are from a non-Indian background. I just want to give some relation here because you may have not seen this kind of um, atmosphere. So I just wanted to, if you, even if some people you, were, you weren't born here, I just want to give you what, and um, context what Prabhupada is trying to say. Um, mm, this was actually quite recent, even when I was a boy. 1992, 93, I was 14 years old. That is 30, 30 years ago. Did I just give away my age? I did that again. So, 92, 93, I was, uh, I don't know, 14 years, something like that. In the morning, I was, uh, my father moved into uh, this kind of a very heavily guarded Brahmana uh, community. And there were like a big temple, like big temp massive temple that just came and the big industrialist there. Had, there was a like, cotton industry and the industrialist had built this temple and it was, this was obviously coming from what Prabhupada is mentioning in the line. All the rich people, they used to build these big temples in their industry or a big palace or a house. And I, was, I had moved with my family, with my father and mother and I have an elder brother. Uh, and we used to, it was like a very alpha kind of male families. And uh, we moved into this um, surrounding where it was a very Brahmana kind of structure. Um, this was 1992, and um, I went back now just to visit my mother the other day. I saw this big difference of what happened to this in these last 30 years, from 1992 or now when I visited in 2020. There's this big difference I have observed. And I spoke to the people there. What happened? Why isn't anybody here? Where is the Bhagavatam class? Where was the Sankirtan that people used to go out in the streets and do the Krishna Sankirtan, the Rama Sankirtan? Where is all this? It's just a very simple deity there and absolutely nobody there except me sitting there and chanting. And people who were coming used to watch me like, what is that bag? What is that bead? What are you doing here? Uh, well, I'm chanting the names of the deity that you come to see. Oh, okay, well, well, that makes sense. Nobody there. So what has happened in the 40 years? So I started asking questions to people there in the temple. I started speaking to the management there. I started asking them, what happened? I'm back in 30 years and there's nobody there. The temples are there, the industry is there, but there's no people, there's no Sankirtan, there's no Bhagavad class. And they, they simply told me that, oh, they don't listen to us anymore. They're all, you know, in the mobile iPhone cultures now, internet cultures, they don't listen to us anymore. I said, well, okay, 